Our study study of St. Mark's Gospel continues today in chapter 4. And Jesus said, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring up. He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Jesus began here with the parable of the sower and the seed. He speaks to a problem that has puzzled everybody at one time or another. Why doesn't God's word have the same effect in everybody's heart? You see it in society at large, in your own circle of friends, even in your own family perhaps. Children who have the same parents, same home, same church, respond so differently to God's word. Jesus says that's because we play a part in the process. Sometimes the divine seed falls on hearts that are hard or shallow or crowded and sometimes on hearts that are open and receptive. But the statistic is so discouraging. Three out of the four things that happen to it are bad. Birds devour it. The sun wilts it. Thorns choke it. Not at all, says Jesus. Because God also plays a part in the process. And because he does, there will always and invariably be a harvest. So is the kingdom of God. As if a man should cast seed into the ground and sleep and arise night and day and the seed springs up he knows not how it is a daunting sight for any farmer on a cold gray morning in spring he looks out over that vast broken field of his empty and barren. He knows he cannot wait for perfect weather, for ideal conditions. For the proverb says, he that looks at the wind shall never plant, and he that watches the clouds shall never harvest. He does not know what will become of his labor, whether he will get too much rain or not enough rain whether some new strain of blight or insect will work against him, whether hail or storm will decimate his standing crop. So he wheels the corn planter out into that plowed field, and he drills the seed into the ground. And what happens? He puts the planter back in the shed and sinks down that night, tired and weary, into a deep sleep. That's what happens. The next morning he arises, does the chores, eats a hearty breakfast, mends the line fences, listens to the new market report, drives into town to get a haircut, Stops at the implement dealers to pick up a few spare parts and shoots the breeze. Milks the cows, feeds the livestock one more time. After supper, he takes his family over to the neighbor's place for a birthday party. And then he goes to bed. And the next day, and the day after that, it's the same old, same old. And all the while, 
without his lifting a single finger, something mysterious is going on out there in that field. The seed buried in the moist earth is active with a life and a power all its own. And this happens. Whether the farmer took an egg course in high school, whether he studied organic chemistry at the university, or whether he never read a book in his life, it happens because God set it up this way. God lets the seasons come and go. God controls the cycle of life and the stages of growth. And the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. The farmer cannot cause the seed to grow, the rain to fall, the sun to shine. He cannot hurry it along, coaxing it or cursing at it. He does not stand in the road, gazing all day at the field, looking for some sign of progress. He doesn't root around in the seed, seeing how they're doing. He does not break open the tender ears and count the kernels. He just waits. And in a natural, old-fashioned way, a little blade pokes its nose up out of the ground. A stalk flourishes thicker, stronger, higher. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. There is something awesome about the patience of God. The unhurried way in which he does his work. God is the one steady, dependable factor in all of the confusion. I don't care how crazy men may become, how insanely they may try, they're never going to wreck God's creation. Not because it's indestructible, it shall one day be destroyed, but simply because God's faithfulness never falters. Men cannot sidetrack God from his purpose. See, trees bud in springtime, and the leaves fall in autumn, tokens to you that his faithfulness remains true. The golden thread of God's promise runs through it all. And after the storms in your life, what? The rainbow still spanning his earth. A reminder to you that his promises cannot pass away. And when you've spent a sleepless night racking your brain over problems you cannot solve, the sun rises <laughs> gloriously bright and beautiful and says to you, look, I am still at work here. I make life go on. I don't have to tell you how comforting that is. Take it of a mother with small children under her feet every waking moment, and at evening she can see no progress and wonders whether her work is even worth it. Of any teacher facing row after row of little bodies with their restless hands and their swinging feet and their frankly bored faces, or of any employee plugging along day after day in shop or office, where his face is questioned and openly scorned. Don't worry. God's working in it all. And that frees you from this accursed notion that you have to do everything, see everything, and know everything. This crazy idea we got that success or failure depends upon our animal energy and restless activity. And I don't know where we got it. 
And we think the harvest depends upon our intelligence or ingenuity. Once you have done the best you can do and all you can do, that's time to let go and trust God for the rest. In the height of the Lutheran Reformation, when Martin Luther was pastor of a large church and professor at the University of Wittenberg, and when he was in daily combat with the authorities of church and state, he once explained what he did on a Sunday afternoon. While I drink my little glass of Wittenberg beer, the gospel runs its course. Probably the nicest thing ever said about beer. Uh, but the point is, Luther did not feel that he had to be everlastingly on the go, roaring around the countryside, explaining everything, managing everything, controlling everything. Now, your job and mine is to sow the seed, let it sink down in our hearts and take roots, and then trust God for the growth, for the fruit, and for the harvest. When disaster comes into our lives, some staggering loss or defeat. When death enters our house, cold and shivering, and lays its icy fingers upon one of our number, that's no time to start sowing the seed of God's Word. That's the time to reap the harvest to take shelter under the boughs, to put in the sickle and reap the fruit of the Spirit, which the Bible says is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. How many times haven't you seen that principle in operation? Take some frail, high-strung woman who in a crisis becomes a rock of Gibraltar and others lean on her for support. Well, how'd she get to be that? Well, so sowed the seed a long time ago. Or take it of the plainest person you ever met. No outstanding talents at all that you can see. And he remains calm when others are losing their nerve. And he radiates peace to the frightened and anxious souls on every side. Take it of a person who every day bears a heavy burden without murmuring, without complaint, drawing strength from some unseen source and sustained by some invisible power. That's what Jesus means. When the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle in because the harvest is come. So God works with us. He knows when the life he gave you is full and complete. When he sees in you everything that he's been looking for. When his purpose for you has fully come to pass. Now the end may come suddenly and unexpectedly or painfully long and drawn out. It may be peaceful and serene. It may be violent and ugly. It may be, by our standards, too soon or too late. But God knows when that harvest is ready. And we do not. He knows when our lives have fulfilled all he has planned for us and when we are ready to reap the destiny that he has promised for us. One day, perhaps on the last day, we're going to stand there and look back with amazement and say, man, if only I had known when I stood at the grave of my loved one, when I was faced with a meaningless disease, when I was so discouraged I wanted to quit and throw in my cards, if only I had known. 
that God's harvest is ripening all the while. How calm, man. How comforted I would have been. And how grateful. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.